So here's the website, this is Yahoo Finance, and I've actually gone in, I've just selected this stock price. Um, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be scraping each individual stock page, um, which is one of what we're looking at now for the uh, this data here. So the, the closing price uh, and the change. And we're also going to be doing uh, collecting the symbol, which is this here. So if we have a look at the URL, we can see that it has the main part of the URL, slash quote, and then slash, and then what appears to be the symbol for the stock. There's a little bit afterwards, but if I actually just remove that and load the page up again, we still get to the same page. So that's a really good indicator for me that we can easily manipulate the URL to get the pages that we're after. Um, so if I change this and we do this, hopefully we get, okay, so I've miss, missed some, but if I click on this one, we can see there's another one and the URL is exactly the same format. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit view page source. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy some specific data that's on this page and uh, search within the source for it. This is a good way of finding out whether you can use requests in Beautiful Soup and just pass the HTML when you're web scraping. If it doesn't appear in the source, it's probably loaded dynamically by JavaScript or something similar. So I'm just gonna copy this line of text. We go to the source again and search. We can see that it's popping up here. Uh, I mean, this is quite convoluted and, and, and pretty um, hard to read, but it is here. So this suggests to me that we can actually get the information out the way that we want to the easiest with beautiful soup and requests. I'm going to copy the URL and we're going to head over to our code. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import the libraries that we need first. So we're going to import requests and then from BS4 we're going to import beautiful soup. Still can't spell that. If you don't have either of these installed, just go ahead and pip install them. Pip install um, requests and BS4. So that, that will get you those libraries installed if you need them. To start working, we're going to set our URL to this one and we're going to chop the end off like we did before. And then we're going to start actually querying the website and the server to get the data back from this specific web page. So R for response is equal to requests.get. We're doing a get method onto the website and then we're going to give it the URL that we've got here. So we're using requests here to get. Um, and this is going to go out ahead and, and bring that information back down from the website. I find it's always good practice to make some custom headers. So I'm going to say headers is equal to, and we are going to specify our own user agent like this, user dash agent. And then the value will be whatever our user agent is. I'll just go ahead to Google and do my user agent. And we're going to copy this string here. And we can get back to our code. I'm going to put that in there. It's quite long, it's going to go off to the next page, but we don't really need to see what that is. So to check that that's working, you might notice I forgot to add headers is equal to headers after the URL in my request.get, but don't worry, I add it in later. I do realize eventually. I'm going to print r.status code, and I'm going to run that, and hopefully down here we get a 200 error, except I didn't spell beautiful soup right. I've missed the U, so don't be like me, and check. Okay, you can just see down in the bottom corner here, we did get a 200, so we know that that's working. Another check to do is r.text. So it's gonna bring back all of the text from this page, and there's gonna be loads of it, but you can sometimes just go through and you can sort of, you'll start to identify a few parts. So this looks like a lot of information to me, so I'm gonna say that what we're after is gonna be there. If you're gonna get hit by captures and stuff like that, you should be able to see it in here. Let's move this out of the way. Uh, now we need to create our soup variable, and we're gonna do soup is equal to beautiful, Soup, and we're going to give it r.text and I'm going to say we're using html.parser there are other ones you can use I just tend to use this one for no real reason other than I use it now to check that this is working I like to do uh, print soup dot uh, title dot text so what that's going to do is it's going to search within the soup which is our html it's going to go through all those html tags to find the title tag and it's going to give us the text of that element this is another good test to make sure that it will work and it does so we've got back exactly what we're expecting the stock price for this specific one that we were looking at aspl so we know that that's all good so now we can start actually querying the specific parts of the website that we're after so we want the stock price and the uh, closed closed data and the change so if we go back to the website and we click on the website and go to inspect let's make this bigger so we can all see and now if I click on this little tool over here, we can see that there is two bits of data that we are specifically after. So I'm gonna click on this one first, which is the closing price. And we can see over here, it's in a span with a class of all of this random class data. Now, normally this puts me off, but if we go ahead and copy that and go back to our code, we can say our price is equal to soup.find, because we want to search on within that HTML and it was a span tag, so we put span in, 
comma, and then we're going to search with a key of uh, class, because it was a class tag, uh, sorry, with class attribute, and then we're going to paste that in there. And I'm just going to print out this element and see what we get back and see if it's going to work. Right, so we got this back here. So we've got the element back and inside it, we can see just here, and that's the closing price. So now we can do is we can put dot text on the end. And that is going to get us just the text from that element, which is right there. So we know that that's working. So the next part of a piece of information we wanted was the change data, which is this bit right here. Um, this one didn't appear to actually do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll click on it anyway, and then we'll check some other stock uh, before we before we move on. So same deal with the span of the class. So let's copy that, come back here and do or support change. Again, soup.find, it was a span tag. And again, the key we're searching for is class and the attribute of this one that we copied, dot text. So now I'm going to do print price and change. Let's print them, let's run that. And we can see we've got our two pieces of data right down here. So to check that this works across a few other stock symbols, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find another one. So we're going to go market data and just grab some. If you know them off the top of your, off the top of your head, go ahead and type them in. I don't. So we're going to try prem.l and vela. Okay, great. So let's put that in here. PRM. So let's run that and see if we get some different data. So as you can see, this has not found this element. So what that suggests to me is that that part of the name, this element changes. So if I go ahead, we just wanted to say combine change. So let's copy, uh, let's comment that one out and let's see if the other span element works for different ones as well. Okay, that does, but this change one didn't. So we need to find another solution to that. It's probably means, it probably means that this changes um, depending on uh, the color. So if you look at this, we can see that the class here has got negative color in so i'm guessing that makes it go red when it is down so if i copy the class from this one and we just paste it underneath we can see that although it's very similar so this was the original one it's got this bit at the end and it's not finding it so what we can do is we can I, we can try shortening it and just finding maybe the first part so let's do that uncomment that and do to change again to print out and let's get rid of the end of this and we'll take it right down to um, there so maybe we'll get a partial match okay still don't so what we're going to do is we need to find another way around this what I like to do in that case is go back up the HTML tag chain so we can see we're right down here zooming in right on these uh, span tags but if we go one up we can see there's a div with a class here that we could try and use and that's got all the information in it we can see that's still highlighted so if we copy that we can then find this div and if we can try and find this more reliably, we can then just reference the span tags underneath by indexing. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean in just a second, but I'm gonna copy this and I'm just gonna have a look on the other page. So we're gonna see it's that. And if we go to um, back to the other thing here, the other, the other price, we can come back over here. And if we get this one again, see it's exactly the same class. It's got this text. So that suggests to me that this class is going to be the constant, whereas these aren't because of the coloring that they're adding to the class. So what we can do is we can copy this, if we go back to our code. We're going to delete these because these don't work across multiple, multiple pages. So we can actually say price is equal to, and we can do soup.find, uh, and then we can find the div. And we can say this one that we know appears, we think appears to be constant. We can do that. And then after this, we can say, after we found that tag, we want to do find all on whatever's in that tag. And we're going to say it's the span because it's always a span tag. We found that out. And if we go for the very, very first one, so you can see, I'll show you, there's two. So in this div element, there's two spans. So we want to always reference both of these. So what we can do is we can just index the first one. It's a zero index. So that'll be the first one. And we do dot text. And then if we copy this out and paste it again, and go to call this one change, and then change this from a zero to a one. This line here, soup.find, this, this div with this class, and then find all span. It's important that we use find all because if we only use find, it would find the first one and we wouldn't be able to index them. Find all always returns a list. So remember that, which is how we can, which is why we can index it. So this one's gonna go for this one, regardless of whatever class this span tag is. So now if I save that, it's clear that so it's easier to see and run it, we can see that we have got the price and then the change. Now, if we change our URL back to, um, is it this one? 
There we go, it's worked. So we can see that even though the class has changed for those span tags, by going up a level in the HTML and getting this div that doesn't change, the class didn't, didn't change, and then doing the find all on that as well in line and indexing the span tags, we can get the data that we're after. So let's try some other ones. Let's go back to the main page. Um, let's see, what can we try? Icon.l and bzt.l. Okay, so let's try those. Icon. If it's not obvious, I don't know an awful lot about stock prices by now. I don't know what will be. There we go, that works. And bzt. So it's looking pretty good so far. Fantastic. So now that I'm confident that this is the way to do it and the way it's going to work, we're going to create ourselves a nice function that's going to have all of this data in it that we can call uh, to give it a stock symbol and then for it to return us the price and the change. So I'm going to delete this and we are going to go over to above our code here and we're going to DEF for define for our function and we're going to say get data and then in here we're going to give it the stock symbol and then we're going to indent all of this into our function. I'm going to move this up as well and here we're going to create a dictionary we're going to call it stock and we'll say that is equal to and we're going to turn this into a dictionary so let's turn let's turn price and change into the keys get rid of the equals and make it into a colon so that becomes the value put commas after them so we don't get any errors and now if we save that and we do return stock like this i missed that in earlier that's my fault. Turns as well. Just going to show we didn't actually need the user agent headers, but we'll include them anyway. So now we're returning the stock data out. We just need to make a quick amend to the URL. So it puts the new symbol at the end of the URL. So we're going to turn it into an F string. And here in the place of the code at the end, I'm just going to put two brackets and I'm going to type the word symbol in here because this is going to be here like this. So it's going to put this in there. It's going to put it in there and then we're going to get the stock data out there. So let's give that a go. So if we print get data and we give it uh, this one, I believe. So this should put that data into the URL and we should get that out. Okay, so we did, that came out of the bottom there. Let's just double check another one, uh, icon. And let's see that that one works. It does, so we can see we get two different sets of data. Great, so now that we know that that works, let's say that there were four or five specific stocks that we were interested in and we just wanted a quick and easy data output of each one at the end of the day, say, or whenever we're interested, as opposed to having to go and open up all the web page and have a look through. What we can do is we can create a list of the symbols that we're interested in and we can loop through them and then output the data. So I'm going to create a list. I'm going to say my stocks and we're going to give it um, the ones that I can remember to save me having to look them back up again. Icon. Prem, that was one. And one more, that's what's BZT. Okay, so there's four there, that will do. So we're happy that our function is working and it returns this, the, um, the data that we're after. So what we can do is we can just loop through this list and then save that to a new list and we'll have a list of dictionaries with all the data in. So what we're gonna do is we need to create our blank list and I'll just do that under here and I'll just say stock data and we'll get our blank list. And down here, I'm going to collapse the function for now because we're happy that that works. What we're going to do is we're going to create a simple for loop and we're going to do for item in my stocks and we're going to say stock data dot append to append each one to the list and we'll say get data and item. So what this is going to do is it's going to use our get data function that we valid uh, we verified works with the symbol and for every stock symbol in this list that we have we're going to reference it with item and then put that into the function and then append the whole thing to our blank list so if i just put a quick print statement in underneath so we know that something's working we'll say print um, getting and then we'll say uh, item in here and then outside of our loop once that's all finished we can do uh, print stock data Okay, so I'm just going to run that. It should take a second or two whilst it goes out and gets all of the data. Okay, and we can see that it's returned out the prices and the change for each one of these. Uh, we can see all the information there. Great, so we know that that works. No good being just printed to the screen though, so we're going to do some kind of output. For this, I'm going to use JSON. We're going to output it to a JSON format. So we need to import JSON into our 
code. This is in the standard Python library, so no need to pip install anything. Uh, to do this is nice and simple because we know that our data is in good shape because we created the dictionaries. We can just simply use a context manager to open a new file and then just write everything to it. And to do that, we use with open as our context manager, and we're going to use json.dump to dump the data into that file. So we're going to do with open, and we're going to give it our file name, which I'm going to say we're just going to be called stockdata.json, and we need to give it uh, uh, w, sorry, for write. If you're, only, if you're opening a file and you just want to read it, you can just put R in there, but we're going to be writing to it, so we need W. And then we do as F. And then underneath here, we do json.dump. And we're going to give it our list, which was stock data. And then we're going to tell it to save it under the file that we've just opened here, which is F. And right at the bottom, I'll just say print F in so we know that it's worked. So I'm going to run that. And hopefully at the end of it, we get fin and under our files, we get a new JSON file with the stock data in it. So we've got the symbol, the price and the change for each data that we have scraped. So that's it guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Slightly different um, output, similar sort of approach, but I think there's another cool, a couple of cool concepts maybe in there that you might find useful to use, even if you've done more HTML scraping before. If you haven't done much web scraping, please consider subscribing to my channel. I've got lots of videos already on the subject there and more to come. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.